welcome everyone to episode 304 oh, of the constantly calibrating podcast that that's it that's all i'm doing on that as always I i'm your host it. josh silverman joined by my co-host i think joined by my co-host justin stanley justin you out there it is back <laughs> glorious up in here what's up God. <laughs> the bat's so glorious he does not need a rubber suit to enhance his bat nipples. <laughs> I'm right, so I'm this. so sorry. I'm so sorry everyone this just can't now. That yeah. that is wonderful. I've been waiting for like two oh. weeks and <laughs> bless you. I can't look down. <laughs> I'm having the same issue in all honesty. So it's terrible mask choices in a wonderful sort of way. Okay. Do you want to- Yes. Oh no, Justin. <laughs> For those uh, listening to the audio podcast, uh, this you, is a visual podcast. This is a, this, tonight is a very visual podcast. Please go to uh, youtubecom slash and at least watch the first like few seconds of this show to understand. Bleeding green. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. So, welcome, bleeding. I hope this is your first episode. Please, I hope so. <laughs> so joining us this week, we have uh, so, so, so uh, joining us for this week. That's this is not even gibber. I wrote gibberish for this intro. <laughs> what, who, who wrote that? So, so this week we have what I'm considering the third spookiest event of your week. Theoretically, uh, we are joined by our two special guests. First, we have one of the hosts of the new entertainment system podcast, Cam Koenig. Hello. Hi, Cam. How are you doing? I'm doing Ooh. pretty great. Got this cool suit. I don't actually have like an established costume. I just paid sixty dollars for this suit because I like it, and I'm gonna get my money's worth out of it. I mean, uh, wholeheartedly. You know. <laughs> I mean, I, in all, while I've wanted you on a podcast for a while now, the fact of the matter is, when I saw the suit, I was just like, "Yep, we we we." I mean, this is here's good. the thing: I have already told people I'm wearing this to like Christmas parties and shit. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> fully commit to this thing year round. I, yeah, yeah. Because man, I mean, look. If you're gonna spend the money on the suit, you wear the suit. Doesn't matter if it's a seasonal. Absolutely. Su- doesn't matter what season it is. You wear the suit. But damn right. Uh, also joining us, we have Bells, one of the hosts of Girls Play. How are you doing? Yes, hello. Have you regretted I'm your great. choice yet to come on? The show? No, no. I've never done really podcast streaming before, so I'm like all hyped up and ready to go. That's awesome. <laughs> I just want to say it's fantastic meeting you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, <laughs> I can't. I cannot look. I, like my my camera's over here, and like you guys are over here, and I I'm glad because I can't look at the screen when I crash. It helps you can like see the video call in my sunglasses, so you can oh, just see it twice on mine. That is absolutely wonderful. So yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, and uh, and everyone listening out there or watching out there, uh, please take bets on how long I can keep this mask on before it just becomes. A, I just before I can't take it anymore. But it actually is surprisingly comfortable. I will give that. But uh, mm-hmm. So tonight's topic. Ditto, and this one is not comfortable. <laughs> it, doesn't look- <laughs> it does not look it. So uh, the plan for tonight is uh, we're going to kind of talk uh, Halloween and spookiness and those kind of things because yeah, uh, it's it's when we're recording this, it is two days to Halloween. This episode will probably release on Halloween, maybe? We'll see how, how, how what the editing is like. So we're going to be talking all that kind of fun stuff we haven't done with these episodes in a while now. And yeah, that's an interesting host. So we haven't done that in a, in quite some time now. So let's first start off with who are you? Bells, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brings you here. I am uh, Bells. I work on GPTV or Girls Play. Um, I am just spooky in nature, I suppose. <laughs> I had a friend recommend me over here because I remind them of Halloween, and I love all things Halloween, so I'm excited for today. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Yeah, no, you were you were uh, uh, referred over here by Dan Nichols, Rathen, our uh, yeah. bridge. Lo- uh, Dan is the record holder for the most appearances ever on the Cubs Calvary podcast. It's true. He has still never been on a show where we interviewed him. It's just we were at we're at events and it's like dan we need a guest and we love you please come on the show so yeah, please, come on my show. Guy. <laughs> please come help yeah so that works so we're glad to have you, you, you uh, i was very excited when he recommended you and i started looking through your stuff and i was like awesome you are gonna be way spookier than anyone else on this show. <laughs> your, your interests are definitely spookier and i like that we're gonna have that like dichotomy of things uh, next though we got gaming we got spooky we got comic 
ish that's glorious and whatever the hell Cam is. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And I'm Cthulhu Luigi. Come on. It's, the, 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 it's so great. Good. It's, it's terrible. It's so, I can't wait. <laughs> My kids have a Halloween parade tomorrow and I cannot wait to show up like this because I don't think any of the parents are ready like me. Yes, <laughs> I don't think parents are actually supposed to dress up, but I'm going to do it anyways. Who cares, right? Oh, yeah. Who, who cares? My kids will theoretically love it. But uh, Cam, who are you and why are you on my lawn? Hey, uh, I'm Cam. I'm actually in my room. I'm not on your lawn. Sorry. Well, um, there goes my I daydream. Am... <laughs> uh, I am one of the hosts of the new Entertainment System podcast. It is a show that I do with my boy, Nate, a.k.a. Two-Headed Giant on everything. Uh, it is a comedy show where we have this, like robot that is totally not a spreadsheet we promise <laughs> that <laughs> takes pieces of different games and randomly jumbles them up and then we just pitch them to each other for like 30 to 45 minutes and that's the entire show it's very very silly it's a whole lot of fun uh yeah it's uh it's a really really cool fun time and we uh just enjoy doing it and getting to meet cool people doing that show and yeah i'm here because I like this show, and you wanted guests, and I said sure. I, I, I mean, honestly, I'll take it. That's a great. That's a great way to put it. Uh, normally, I say, a confident answer. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say this at the top of the show just to make just for everyone knows. Uh, the New Entertainment Citizen Podcast is my favorite podcast in existence, pretty much. And I know you're not supposed to say that on your own show, but seriously, even go listen to that show every week. Uh, they please, just they, please, please, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, uh, moving along, let's talk. Uh, let's talk like our, our our individual like histories with uh, spooky stuff. Because again, three of us here are are not, I think, the most hardcore into horror stuff, but like have itself <laughs> an interest. But I just so I want to just kind of go around and just talk about uh, uh, interest in, in in that world of things. Justin, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you first. What's your what, what's your horror uh, aficionado status? I I just watch them whenever they're on. <laughs> wow, it's actually more like than me. He's like, he's officially beating me at this point. Great. One. great. <laughs> I, I don't. I mean, like, I don't hardcore get into horror, but I do enjoy it when I watch it. Uh, actually, be the same way. I think the latest. Well, I don't count it, but the latest horror film I saw was It too, even though that was more of a comedy. Um. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, I mean, spooky. <laughs> Comedy, you know, works still in, the, in a horror way, I, I think, at least. But also, I'm, you know, scared of things. It's like, it's, and as far as, like, scares go, I am the knight, so you can't scare the glorious <laughs> one. But, no, I do like more that's more atmospheric, more that's suspenseful type of horror. And I don't like to jump scares too much, but you can't make this bat flinch, baby. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, for me, uh, like for for me, I just was the person I remember just being a little kid and I saw the Silence of the Lambs trailer on a vacation and I didn't sleep for like three days and I was like five, <laughs> five or six years old. And that was yeah, pretty much pretty relatable. And that was pretty much it for horror for me. Uh, I, I, I still do enjoy I, I do enjoy stuff that I see. It's just not something I seek out um, when. I lived with you. You passed me the controller to play Bioshock. <laughs> oh, that is correct. We lived together. That's adorable. I made That's it so sweet. I know. I made it about two hours in the Bioshock before it became too much for me to handle, and I still wanted to see the game. So yeah, I made you play it for me, and you played for four hours before it then got even too much for a watch. <laughs> <laughs> um th 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 that's the joke always that like um people ask me like you know what's like the scariest game you've played and i literally can't come up with an answer half the time like i i did i was thinking about this before the podcast with the scariest video game i could not think of something uh but as far as movies like go uh i'm all about the scream movies I have always been it was my first actual horror movie i sat down to watch was scream even though i watch it now and i'm like i, this, I don't even understand why i called this a horror movie <laughs> because <laughs> and stuff like that it's, i mean slasher flick more than anything and i think that's the slasher stuff is like where i l the stuff i still do like if i'm gonna watch it but 
honestly, as long as somebody doesn't mind me holding a pillow somewhat in front of my face, I'll watch anything. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of, yeah. So it also works that my wife is even more afraid of that kind of stuff. So I don't have to worry about uh, (laughs) pleasing somebody with that. But uh, uh, Bells, let's move on to you. Uh, Like, so what got you into spookiness? Uh, I keep saying spookiness. It sounds so (laughs) childish. What what, what got you into, like, like, horror-minded kind of stuff and this, like, kind of thing? Uh, What's your origin story with that? And then what is it that you, like, movies or games that you really appreciate? Yeah. uh, So my dad, growing up, was just, I mean, like, he's a big punk rocker and was always watching horror movies and stuff. And so when I would go visit him, that was, like, a way for us to bond where he would find, like, you know, The Lost Boys, which is maybe a little scary. Mm-hmm. But, like, a kid could maybe watch that. Yeah. I, I don't scare easily. That helps. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, growing up, I remember, like, fourth grade bringing up the Ring DVD to my mom. And I found it that they had rented it. And I went, can I watch this? Can, can, this be, can I do this? And they were like, uh, maybe? <laughs> Um, yeah, and so ever since as a young age, I've just, like, gravitated toward it. I really, just, like, was striving to find something that would actually, like, scare, scare me, mm-hmm. but never really found movies that did and ended up just appreciating them instead. Um, and my family actually runs and helps work in a haunted house. Oh. So that's okay. kind of part of that as well, where we're all kind of into spooky things. So you just kind of have like that uh, spooky vibe, like in your blood, essentially. It's just part yeah. of like, it's just part of your makeup. Yeah. I was born of the spooks. Born, born, <laughs> born of the spooks. No, I always, I always find that so fascinating about people. Like some people who just, um, cause I used to think of it that, you know, I saw something maybe that was too scary when I was a very little kid and it just, uh, I saw it at the wrong age or the wrong setting or something, but then yeah. there are just some people who it doesn't matter the age they start watching stuff or the setting they watch stuff. It just becomes a, it's, it's just, it's almost like a genetic thing. Like that. It just doesn't, you're like less likely to be afraid or something. I, I was yeah. fascinated by what, uh, does or doesn't do it for people in that regard. Definitely. Well, and like the haunt background was nice because like, instead of seeing something like gory, it was like, whoa, how did they do that? Mm-hmm. Like, that's mm-hmm. all makeup. That's super cool. And it was like more of a learning how to do it and like being appreciative of the technical effects rather than being like, oh my God, that's horrifying. Yeah, which is what I... Tr- if if I watch uh, anything horror, uh, I turn my brain into like director mode, visual effects mode. Yeah. That's how I yeah. get through the movies because I just like I will literally kind of <laughs> it's almost like, um, yeah, I break myself free. Like I don't immer- I've tried to forcibly not immerse myself in it so that I can <laughs> experience that because that's the stuff I really appreciate is how things yeah. are made because uh, after seeing Scream the first time I want I'm I, I want to say I was like 11 when that came out. So like 11, 12, uh, I became, anytime I got like scared that uh, Ghostface was outside my window, I would just go <laughs> on the primitive internet and research how they did the blood or how they did this or, you know, just because like that made it less real. But also I was just fascinated. And once upon a time, I thought I was going into that field. Yeah, totally. Uh, I think that's what I love the most about horror video games is it forces you to like immerse and be a part of that, yes. which is a, a wild ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can't like sit back and cover your eyes. You have yeah. to push forward. You have to interact <laughs> for the game to continue. It's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. You have to continue to keep moving forward. You have to continue to keep immersing yourself in the game. Otherwise, you don't get further in the game, which then you're reliving the same horror <laughs> fest all over and over again. That yeah. you, and you just see your self-fulfilling prophecy of this, this, not, ne- this never-ending <laughs> thing uh i don't play a lot of horror games for that reason though <laughs> justin remember my plan to do like a big like just stream the crap out of anything i i personally found scary in october that didn't that didn't happen <laughs> man I've got, that's a big list <laughs> yeah i well th- yeah well my plan was the joke of it was going to be that i was going to find stuff that no other person was going to find scary and i would just wwe 2k be- what's up Nothing. WWE 2K20. No, everyone <laughs> finds that. Ter- I heard you after that. No, everyone finds that terrifying. <laughs> uh, Cam, what about yourself? What's your uh, history with yeah, this? Yeah, so I am also not really into like I scare incredibly easily. Um, <laughs> I I uh, growing up like I never we never really watched a whole lot of horror movies. In fact, like it's always weird what I have found like kind of like chilling or scary are like weird parts of not horror movies like to this day to me like the scariest movie i have ever watched is 2001 a space odyssey (laughs) it's too quiet 
That movie's too <laughs> quiet. It scares the shit out of me. But, no, but I get, uh, I get that kind of God, spooks. man. Mm, mm, yeah. Anyway, um, the, uh, like, growing up, uh, I remember I had a babysitter who, it was like a friend of my parents, and, like, over the summer, like, I don't think she, like, had, like, a full-time job, so she, my parents would basically just, like, throw me and my brother over there, and they were very much into horror movies, particular like slasher flicks. Mm. Keep in mind at this point, I was nine years old. Uh, <laughs> probably not the best thing for me to be watching, uh, mm. but we did. Uh, and I, they never really scared me, uh, mm. but they always, I, I, I enjoyed the spectacle of them. Like I enjoyed how oh, yeah. kind of almost deliberately ridiculous those movies are and how every single one of them is like, kind of like a color by number like coloring page of this is always going to happen this is always going to happen it was like really formulaic that always really interested me but hmm. i thought like the effects were cool i thought the ideas were neat uh yeah and like we watched a whole lot of those uh i i i kind of like as far as like a spooky atmosphere though the stuff that i always find myself drawn to is kind of more of that like wholesome halloween atmosphere if that makes sense like something that's not deliberately scary but has that kind of like maybe there's some like zombies or something like the game that jumps out to me the most is actually medieval which just got a remake okay um like that that kind of environment that kind of atmosphere is something that i always feel myself really drawn to it feels like almost cozy in a weird way uh and i think that just has to do with like all of the fall colors just kind of meshing and all that stuff but uh, yeah, I've I've never really been one for like scary stuff, but I appreciate the spectacle and the ridiculousness of a whole lot of them. Um, I thought Cabin in the Woods was fucking awesome mm -hmm. when none of my friends did. Uh, oh, that just, movie is so just, good. Yeah. No, it's, it's so good. <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah, and just because it is entirely like just a meta commentary on slasher movies in general. And right. so I yeah, it that that the kind of deeper than surface level stuff was always more interesting to me. Then the uh, jump around a corner, jump scare, gotcha, stab somebody in the chest, leave kind of shit. Yeah, the horror stuff I like is like your cabin in the woods. It's uh, it's again mm -hmm. the scream. It's the stuff. It's meta and and you know kind of explores things from a different per uh, from a different perspective. That's always what I've just. Uh, also enjoy just because it's a different exploration even like um uh zombie land just like it's it's yeah, it, 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 great. Yeah. it's scary at points or it can be it's made for horror but it's also 100 percent unequivocally a comedy totally but the fear in it for especially for someone like me there are genuine moments it's not mocking the genre it's it's enjoying the genre it's poking fun at it it's stuff like that so i've, I've always enjoyed those kind of things while you were talking i also had a memory of the first horror, horror thing i considered a horror movie i ever saw the witches from 1990 and i just was like i, I started thinking yes. ooh, i started thinking about that and i pulled up a picture just to make sure and that's the first time i've seen a picture from that film and uh <laughs> since i was five <laughs> years old and wow that took me back horrifying <laughs> like, I, I remember watching a whole lot of like i think it was amc for years did like a horror oh, yeah. like movie mm -hmm. and tv show marathon and me oh. and my mom would always sit down and watch these like classic horror movies we watched just an absolute ton of night gallery every year like that's one of my favorite shows because that show rules uh just like kind of weird almost like suspenseful or honestly super cheesy shit is like kind of my jam yeah no it Definitely. makes sense that's always good stuff so all right then for you know uh, what specifically in this for each person when you are watching something horror when you're you know watching those kind of things what is it like do you are you a person who prefers we kind of talked about this a little bit just now but like a little more deeper uh, are you a person who likes jump scares do you like the more suspenseful lead up do you like uh, more of a thriller mentality or something thereabouts what is it that kind of you know uh, gets you going and gets you enjoying I, uh, kind of I and, fucking and, and hate jump scares. Yeah. I fucking hate jump scares so much. Like, <laughs> I, I think they're cheap, and I don't really feel, like, personally yes. that you get much out of them. Like, if anything, they're just like, oh, great, now I'm embarrassed in front of a bunch of these people for <laughs> reacting to something happening very suddenly in front of me. Uh, I think that stuff can be done well, but, man, fuck jump scares. I, I can't do it. 
I like the old school kind of jump scare where it wasn't like literally something just jumps out and they make a loud noise and there's no like uh, nothing to mm. it. I like the ones where it was almost like it's meant to make you jump. It's not the screen jumping at you. So like yeah. somebody's like says something and their eyes turn to the camera and look straight mm-hmm. in the camera kind of thing. And you're like, or if it like yeah. lingers on something for mm-hmm. a little bit, yeah. for a little bit longer yeah. than usual. It's, yeah. uh, like Those it's, moments it, where yeah. like a. I was watching Midsummer last night, and there's a shot where, like, a mirror is closing, and suddenly there's a person there, and mm-hmm. then they disappear. Mm-hmm. Those are always like, oh. <laughs> yeah. it's That stuff's great. It's yeah, the, yeah. The, the, those kind of things. It, it, yeah, like, the original idea of it where it's to make you you react. You know, you're again, you're staring at the screen, and it just flickers a little bit in one corner, and it's – and mm-hmm. you see you see if and you're like, what the <laughs> fuck was that? And you rewind, and you're like, oh, 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 kind of thing, or something like that. Like, those are the kind of, like, things that make you jump that I like. The actual just, like, haha, gotcha stuff. It's like, ugh, mm-hmm. it's, I've seen it used well before, but it, it's an overused tactic in the last 15-ish years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, anyone else uh, have a thing they really like or really just don't like? Uh, in, in horror I, things. I, uh, I, I guess since I, I said, started talking, I said I'll anyone else, damn. No. <laughs> well, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, I, I like a nice, like, slow kind of build up, and then just like a sudden kind of like explosion of like something big is happening. Uh, like I, I, I'm not really so much into like a v- too intense of a thriller, but if you give me something that has like a good slow build of like suspense, and then just like a point where you just realize shit is going down. Uh, not necessarily if it has to be in like the horror genre or anything, but sure. Uh, like that slow build, that slow build is really, really satisfying to me. Uh, that's something I've always really deeply mm-hmm. enjoyed. I feel that. I mean, uh, we could have a whole topic on uh, on this, but like it's what was the, the part that was enjoyable about Joker was just the slow build to madness in it. You know uh, that, you know, just the kind of thing of just seeing where the hell the movie was going and, you know what's happening, and it's just, just so methodical paced. Like I like that in in, in a lot of movies when it's just like, you you see where that you see the madness coming in, you see like the descent kind of happening, that that kind of stuff. Always that, that suspenseful thriller, but slower kind of thing. I think oh, yeah. I think some of that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I feel that. I feel like if I if I want a scary movie, I still want it to be a, a good movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not into the ones... I feel like there were so many movies in the early 2000s, like 2010, mm-hmm. that were literally just jump scares. Oh, and yeah. that's all they had going for them. And very just, like, loose ideas and loose plot. And yeah. that was the most captivating thing, is that you maybe got, like, five jump scares all at once. And it's like, no, I want, I want a good movie that is also going to, like, chill me to the bone. I remember some movie, I think I'm remembering this, where the marketing was literally, the marketing material for it literally was like, this movie has over a hundred jump scares. And it was like something like that, that that was actually part of their marketing. And like the trailer showed like 20 different jump scares in like a a montage. And I'm like, what the, like, I I just, I could, I'm trying to remember what it is. I can vaguely see it right now. That sounds like a paranormal activity kind of a thing Very it much. does it definitely yeah, def- yeah. It, i just remember that i was just like okay well i now know a movie i'm not gonna see and also let me see who the hell <laughs> right, does your right. marketing because i don't want anything to do with, <laughs> with anything well, movies, like you eventually just get numb to it sure yeah. like sure yeah. yeah and then that's also not fun because if the movie's based around jump scares and not being a good movie then once you become numb to it it's just like oh cool 45 more minutes of this huh <laughs> right yeah you just wasted two hours of my life thanks <laughs> thanks guys this is this is so good uh yeah so then uh one other questions on here we kind of uh talked a little bit i had one. Oh, you, you had okay go ahead justin <laughs> sure i like what like shows the thing well i don't know if like or i hate this this is true gaming and films or like shows the thing you should be scared of and just kind of calm and all of a sudden they do a freaky move towards you not a normal move they walk weird or move weird <laughs> oh yeah like uh, like just the oh, yeah. limbs fly around and stuff. I need a gif of that like right now. <laughs> uh, could you audibly hear my shoulder? Both my shoulders just absolutely pop in and out. Yes, <laughs> that was a very terrible sensation. <laughs> Damn you, Ring Fit Adventure! <laughs> That's the scariest game ever made. <laughs> I can see it. Dragos yeah, is so sexy. Like, uh, PT does it so well too. Like like the mm. ghost mm-hmm. Lisa will be in the hallway, just creepy. You're like nope, but yep. it's a hallway. Well, that's and I have to go that way. <laughs> <laughs> PT is one of those things where I've never played it. 
but I have probably watched hours upon hours upon hours mm-hmm. of videos of it. Uh, and yeah, and it's like, you know, uh, usually a lot of people, like comedians playing it because then it's like, you know, ha funny, you know, kind of thing. But even just recently, somebody put that video up on Twitter like a month or two ago where they uh, kind of hacked the game to show you how you're like the way you're being followed and stuff like that. And yeah. it was somehow made this game I've never played before a hundred times scarier <laughs> just yeah. because like oh I, my God. I, I can't remember exactly what they did but it was just like but it was just essentially showing the the, the a character following you and the, just the way it and works it, uh, pretty much like hack the camera so it stays yeah. static yeah. so yeah. while you like, move whenever you Ooh, hear like so the scary. whispers I think whenever it was the whispers of her talking they actually put like her character model literally right behind the camera at all Ooh. times and I so they like hacked it to turn around and she was just there in your face and the moment you turn around, it's just like she followed you like the back of your head. It was wild. <laughs> yeah, like I uh, legitimately won. It was really cool seeing how the game was made, like the mechanical aspect. But also, I was like, holy shit, this made it that if I <laughs> if somebody ever convinces has a PS4 with that on it to convince me to play it. Yeah, I'm going to piss myself. <laughs> <laughs> One day I still have it. I, I, I know you yeah. do. Uh, I know you do. Yeah, no, eventually, uh, maybe, maybe Josh plays uh, spooky games. Will be a Patreon goal once we launch that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God, did no. you guys watch Haunting of Hill House on Netflix? I desperately want to, and I almost mm. psyched myself up to up to do it. Um, I want to because again, the way it's made and everything, and I, yeah. I, I, I've watched a bunch of behind the scenes stuff for things, and okay, it's it's on my list. Um, I'm gonna make myself watch it sometime in the next like few weeks. I think. They did a really interesting thing where they hid a lot of things in the background Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. aren't immediately apparent. And I didn't know until after I finished and started watching YouTube videos about it and then got scared all over again. Because (laughs) the thought of me being so focused that I watched like, you know, a 10, 13 episode show, hour long episodes, and there were things literally staring into the camera that I didn't see the entire time. That's like what (laughs) like that's horrifying (laughs) that is like you know a ghost in your closet watching you sleep that's so scary (laughs) that sounds awesome it it's every yeah i know everything about it and it's just everything about the that show is just so fascinating how they put it together and i really like that's why i want to watch it because again yeah it's i don't necessarily want to be scared i'm not even i'm somewhat interested in the plot but it's like i just want to see the crafting of this thing to see how they scared Mm -hmm. people and the framing and just different aspects of that I'm also the guy who I'm 34 years old and I still at least once a week will walk by my bed and be like, oh, shit, I wonder if there's something in my bed. I'm just going to jump into my bed. <laughs> so it's like, you know, uh, yeah, kind of, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Megan in chat, you ever just walked into you ever just walk into a room and wonder what you just walked in on? Uh, <laughs> welcome to Consul Calibring Podcast, that's Megan. Right. That is literally what this that's what this should always be. And <sighs> yeah, it's. Cho- cho- again, I said the top of the show choices were made. Um, <laughs> yep. So, what was everyone's first either horror movie or horror series or hor- horror game? What was, if you can remember, mm. what was the first mm. thing you ever uh, took in? Essentially, uh, again, mine was I realized uh, dramatically or f- ten minutes ago it was The Witches from 1990. <laughs> but uh, intentionally watching that was actually made to be a horror would be Scream, as I already said. So, uh, anyone else got mm. one they can remember? I, like, I'm pretty sure I've probably seen Halloween or Friday 13th beforehand, but mm. I don't know why Killer Clowns from Outer Space is sticking in my mind. <laughs> I, I think mean- that movie just really fucked me up. <laughs> I hear it does that to people. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Uh, I remember hmm. watching Poltergeist when I was maybe like ten. Oh shit! I just it remembered was... watching Poltergeist. Sorry, you just reminded yeah. me of watching. That. Right, it was like one of those shows that like my parents were flipping through the TV and found it, and then I was like, "Whoa, this looks crazy!" And then they sat there for a minute and were like, "Should we let a ten-year-old watch <laughs> this?" Mm-hmm. And then they were kind of like, if it gets too scary, just like say something maybe. (laughs) And it it rocked my world. I remember going into my third grade class and telling my teacher that I watched it. And she was like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. And I was like, I keep seeing 
that scene where he like goes into the bathroom and like rips off all the skin on his face. Ooh. And she was like, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Like, that's so scary. Think about happy things. And I was like, what? No, that was awesome. Like, <laughs> that is my happy thing. Hell yeah. And then yeah. Bells was sent to the guidance counselor. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when everyone put me in the corner and went, okay. All right. Just, uh, You're the weird one. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've all been there for different things. Uh, no, I was in a mm. poltergeist. Uh, I were just I kind of vaguely remembered because uh, the Simpsons did a spoof on that, you know, and uh, I loved among everything th- among everything. Sure. I remember uh, doing that. And then, you know, in the mid to late 90s, some of the, the mid 90s, uh, USA Network used to love the show Poltergeist. And my dad's boyfriend, uh, when I was like this, I'm going to say roughly like somewhere in nine to 12 range because uh, mid 90s, he just was like, I think he must have in his head been like, I'm going to fuck with this kid and who likes this Simpsons <laughs> episode. And yeah, he put on Poltergeist and like, I, I, I vaguely remember him like bribing me. Like if I wanted my Hanukkah presents, I had to watch this <laughs> oh, movie man. or something like Because it was just, for some reason that we were watching it right before then, it was like some shit like that. And yeah, I don't, we don't, I don't talk uh, to that particular uh, ex of my dad anymore. <laughs> so, Good reason probably. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was definitely a little, uh, yeah, a, a yeah. choice a choice to be made no it wasn't hanukkah presents uh he was he, he had a bunch of spider-man comics he was going to give me his oh. col- his collection of spider-man comics from the 70s and Ooh, that, that's rough no yeah, that, and that was a good yeah, I, I, like, I, that would have been yeah. rad no, that <laughs> yeah. was I, oh i made a good choice uh suffering uh, through now that you said that i think that was totally worth it yeah yeah, yeah no like, like as soon as i thought about it psychological you know, scars yeah, are yeah, surely worth it be damned you got spider-man that's all right classic spider-man yeah you're like okay <laughs> yeah pretty much right. it, it works out uh uh yeah d- did we get everyone for uh can, I can, can, yeah, what do you can yeah i'm still thinking um <laughs> so Happy. Uh, so uh, the first like horror game that I remember playing, and I say horror very loosely, was <laughs> uh, Medieval. Actually, uh, I love the shit out of that game. This Nobody is the most Medieval's does. been talked about on anything. <laughs> it, it, that's that checks out. I'm like one of twelve people who was excited for that remake. Um, I, I, I was yeah, kind I, of excited. More but power <laughs> to you. Yeah, man, I I love the shit out of that game. I love the sequel. That was something like me and my mom always played a lot growing mm. up. Uh, it's just like a fun, goofy, spooky adventure where you can rip off your arm and throw it like a boomerang. That's pretty fun. That's really <laughs> funny to an eight-year-old, let me tell you. Um, I remember then, like the trailers uh, and stuff like that for it and being very yeah, interested in that aspect. I, I remember playing it off of like one of the Pizza Hut demo discs, and I'm like, oh shit, I have to have this. <laughs> oh my this. god. Yeah, oh man. Somebody when handed it out at like... that pizza demo discs oh, were a thing. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. Got that. Crash Team Racing. Woo! Woo! Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I played a whole lot of that in the sequel um, and every subsequent release they've put out for that. Uh, first horror movie I remember watching, I have no idea, to be completely honest. Um, but I remember this like horror adjacent, just fucking terrible show my mom would always kind of make me watch because she loved it is uh, Dark Shadows. OK, um, that show is bad. Mm hmm. Uh, it's uh, Dark Shadows. It was like re. It was like re, sort of remade as like a movie with Johnny Depp recently. Um, oh, but it's okay, this okay. Old, it's this old like maybe three fourths of the show is in like black and white. It's this like family of vampires or like this vampire f- with like a bunch of family or what. It's a vampire soap opera in black and white, and it's super <laughs> over dramatic. Like uh, uh, you I just can, looked like, up how many episodes. Mike- there's so many episodes. 1,225 like yes. episodes. What people Why? love the shit out of that show, and I don't get it. It's a bad show, but there's like something charming about it. Uh, there's like what a the bunch fuck? of shots where like actors forget their lines, and you can like hear somebody like feeding them their line. You can see the fucking microphones in some of the shots. Like the camera gets bumped into a couple of times. It's a terrible television show. That sounds like absolute gold. It's, it's kind of amazing, but it's terrible. Like every (laughs) single person in that show basically dies and comes back like three times throughout the (laughs) thousand plus episodes. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> so I just had a thought. I, I really hope I want to know if that's on Amazon Prime because then Twitch streamers can do a watch along oh, with their shit. audience yes. of that. Oh, and, shit. Okay. And that's, I would. 
that I would, would rewatch the <laughs> shit out of Dark Shadows with people. Oh man, like that sounds Ooh. like. And plus, it's twelve hundred twenty-five episodes. So you Great. Yeah, you'll that's be like infinite for content. Long. Infinite yeah. content. Oh no! Oh no! Oh. oh no! So oh, games. How could I forget? I mean, yeah, it's common, but I remember little Justin was his PlayStation. My brother came, friend came over with a certain game, Resident Evil. Oh no. Zombie in the closet goes straight to hell. I hate that guy. <laughs> I, I mean, every single iteration of him. And the dogs through the window the first time. Those were like the two biggest moments for me. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't sleep. I still remember going next door to my friend Chris's house growing up. And he's like, I got this new game, Josh. He needed, of course, everyone knew I was afraid of everything. Uh, and he says, you got to watch this. And literally the thing he shows me is the dogs jumping through the window thing. <laughs> point is, is he plays that thing, that part of Sounds it. Sounds like huh? a bad friend. They, they all were bad friends growing up. Okay, and okay, that's fair. I, I, I was very nerdy and and absolutely terrified of people. It was not a great combination in Stanford, Connecticut. For <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a, it's a big, big mood, big mood. You know, mm. so uh, so yeah, no, it, it was a thing. But yeah, so like I've never been able to play a Resident Evil game or really. I can't even watch people stream the games because it's like. It's spooky, in, but yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. but it's it, 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 I was supposed to play uh, Resident Evil Two remake in October, and I didn't get to that. So hopefully, I'll get to that at some point because <laughs> I want people to see my first time playing this stuff. Because I mean, it, we still got time. It's sure October. It. It's October 29th, Justin. It's it's it's, it's not <laughs> Halloween yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're, you're right. <laughs> and I just had to re- remember that I made a Guiji thing for uh oh yes <laughs> and i just realized i forgot to move it to my own camera and i was like if i oh. use that it appears on bell's face <laughs> so, <gasps> Perfect. so nope it doesn't it actually appears on the- <laughs> oh damn <laughs> There it is. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I don't uh, I just, I, oh, excellent. I, I nice. made this dumb. Th- I, 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 I had all these ideas for Halloween for all these dumb things, and they mostly just involved Guiji masks because, yeah, we, yeah, we, that's fair. That's again, fair. we all, we all make, we all, we all make choices. Uh, so I have a question, this, uh, Bells. This will be more for you since you are the horror person here, but I feel like we can also uh, the rest of us can talk about this. How do you feel you introduce a non-spooky person to spooks without over spooking them? And that is literally yes. what I wrote in my doc here. For <laughs> <laughs> I had a roommate in college who loves, like, Halloween loves the season, but absolutely cannot stand anything horror. Like, I like to say he's a big pansy about it, but only because he's my best friend and I sure. love him. But it really, I mean, like, he has anxiety. It really trips him out. He can't even have posters on his wall because faces in the middle of the night will freak him out. Ooh, yeah, like, I, I re- it's a big identify. thing for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And so I would, I just try and find like, we were talking a little bit about like horror comedies, like you said, Cabin in the Woods, Mm -hmm. things like that, Scream. I'm like, those are perfect where you only get maybe scared once or twice, but are really like meta and have those moments where you can laugh. Um, I also love the show like Gravity Falls. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, uh-huh. but it, oh, yeah. it, it takes it takes place in Oregon, which I'm from, so I'm a little partial to it. But it's like that. Per- it's a Disney show, but it's kind of spooky and kind of strange sometimes, and gets kind of weird. And you know, I like pushing that on people. I really like trying to make it play games that maybe are just a little bit too far. But I'm like, come on, just like try it out. <laughs> no, I mean it's a good way of going about things. That's I, I think I honestly think that those like. Uh, Subtle touches, those things that are scary but not horror necessarily or yeah. have fun with the genre, have fun with stuff is definitely the best way to kind of to bring someone into it. Uh, they may never get uh, you know immersed into the, the full breadth of things, but it's then they get a little more of an appreciation of it and a little more understanding of it. And then, you know, maybe may, maybe uh, overcome some fears while, while, along the way. Yeah. Uh, Justin we or Cam? Played, oh, God, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Oh, we played Until Dawn, and like he was able yeah. to come hang out, and yeah. we had Ooh, a set of like three of us who sat in front of the TV and played it all together, and he was like fully covered in a blanket behind <laughs> us, like ready to close his eyes and hide, but still like I kind of want to see, but I'm yeah. scared, and so like nope. trying to be that person, like like you said, knowing like I'm gonna watch this, but I'm gonna have a pillow to hide behind the whole time. Like I feel like. It's not fun to push someone to be in a place that's not fun for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even even though I'm not like super into horror stuff, there again, there are the things I do like, and my wife is doesn't like any of it. Doesn't like mm-hmm. anything even slightly scary. And I like made some bad calls her in our relationship because my thought was, I'm scared of stuff. She can't possibly be more uncomfortable or scared of things than I am. And uh, 
I I didn't it wasn't able to go, but I encouraged friends to take her out to uh, the Dawn of the Dead remake, you know, 15 years ago. <laughs> and uh they yeah and they they like yeah like they, they took her out to it i couldn't make it uh, last minute and she cried afterwards for like oh no six oh, no. hours or something oh. like that and, and i was like okay I, we, we're, we're a new relationship i'm like okay uh bad boyfriend move bad choice <laughs> uh, and but i learned uh and then like uh what stuff she it turns out zombies are just like her problematic thing uh, that's actually her, her big oh. issue um mm. but no, but then I ended up introducing her to uh, Scream, and what we did was every Halloween we watched the new Scream movie, and that was kind of what we did because I'm like, it's a different kind of uh, Halloween thing, and her best friend came over at the time, and like that became our Halloween tradition because it was a nice, immersive thing, and we could pause it, and then it ended up not even again being that scary. Uh, it, certainly by the time you get to the third one, which is really just like <laughs> it's just a fucking comedy, um, yeah, a comedy where people occasionally get stabbed, and it does, it's just ridiculous. Um, but 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 yeah, so like that that was kind of you know, uh, fu- it, finding the things that uh, are easier in a person, and finding and also figuring out the stuff that will actually trigger them to have a bad experience, mm-hmm. so that you can just completely and utterly avoid that stuff, even if it's your thing. Just right. you just avoid that shit, and you um, you know, you figure out what what actually will pull at them in the in the right ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Cam, Justin, do you either one of you have any uh, additional thoughts uh, on that? Yeah, uh, it, a lot of mine was kind of similar to what Bell's mentioned. Uh, like I I remember bringing a like there was this Halloween movie night me and a bunch of friends had in college, mm-hmm. and we were all tasked with bringing one movie to show everybody, and we all would sit through it and watch it, just hang out, have a good time. Uh, and I wanted to like keep it accessible, so I brought the movie Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, which is great. Uh, yeah. And it's like very much that like it's entirely a comedy, and it mm-hmm. is the whole like slasher movie just entirely flipped on its head. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much of it because you should fucking watch that movie because it's great and hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, Charlotte yeah, and I, I Charlotte and I watched mm-hmm. that with her her parents during uh, like in, in the middle in a cabin in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. kind of experience over Thanksgiving weekend Ooh. a couple of years ago. And after the movie ended, her, her both her parents were like, "This was the fucking stupidest shit. How the hell?" Yeah. <laughs> Literally, her, my father in law cursed me out and called me <laughs> some really <laughs> choice stuff for putting it on. He's like, and he's like, "Well, it, I, at least you you and my daughter didn't like it." And we're like, "We just." Decided to just go along with that and, and then, like yeah. we didn't like Aww. it because oh my god the onslaught that, that uh, we were rules and, and then we were both like we would go into our room we lay in bed and we're like that was fucking awesome it was fucking <laughs> awesome yeah man uh and uh i i think what you mentioned just like something i've always found to be pretty successful with at least other people like getting me to enjoy or at least appreciate movies uh is finding something that does something that not really any other movies do. Mm-hmm. Um, in case in point, which I don't think it's a good movie, but Unfriended. I was like really into the fact that all of that takes place on just one computer screen and it's handled really, really well. I thought like the presentation was very good. I thought the movie was real bad, uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it was still like enjoyable to watch and it kind of turned into like, a, oh, this is like really cheesy, but presented well. So we're just going to sit here and just riff on it the whole time, which like took all of the tension out of the room. Uh, like you mentioned earlier as well, Bells, uh, Until Dawn is fucking great um <sighs> i had a friend of mine who really wanted to play that but does not have a ps4 i had it installed on my system so she came over and we just played through the entire game and i was into it like she's <laughs> very much into horror and i am very much not but i'm like man this is so cool and it it was kind of satisfying to see the shitty teenagers die but that's probably <laughs> something that's going to get me put on a list for saying um no you, like you're I, good when i was yeah. playing that game my thing of the street people come in it's like what's your goal it's like they're all horrible they all gotta die except for this one character <laughs> i like her she's, she's them, sweet right? and then like the one that was like the extreme like i just she's just nasty it's the only one was like you know what if it happens i ain't gonna stop it yeah but my only rule is i can't cause oh, yeah. it She's the only one that lived. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, it's, it's how it's got to uh, yeah. go. Yeah, but just like finding like cool or interesting ways to kind of get people interested in it. Like, hey, I know this is a horror movie, but like if you if you can find somebody who's really interested in the presentation or like something that's super accessible, like Cabin in the Woods or like right. uh, Tucker and Dale or really kind of. It, it, it you have to like get to know the person like you can't just be like random stranger on the street. Have I got a movie for you? You know? 
Hmm. Uh, it, yeah. it, you have to understand the other person, I feel. Yeah, I think most times you do. I mean, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you can, you know, figure something out in that case. But you, you got you to know people before you introduce sure. them. I think almost okay. anything, oh, honestly. Yeah. I think a good edge and odd show. I mean, it's hit and miss, but the just American horror story stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, seems yeah, like it has yeah, like yeah, a story yeah. that goes with it, so it keeps you interested. That continues, mm-hmm. but it does have its spooky moments too. At the same yeah, time, so that first season is real good, mm-hmm. really, really good. Yeah, yeah. We watched uh, almost half of the first season, and it got too much for us. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes uh, some places. Well, it yeah, it, was, it, it was, can be a lot. It was too much combined with the fact that we were. I think we're, if I remember right, we were having. Our cable service didn't like working with our TiVo, so it would just sometimes not record, and it just became – it's too much work to watch this show that's giving mm-hmm. us, like, the yeah, you know, a little bit of anxiety kind of thing. So it's just <laughs> right. like, we're just going to we're just gonna, we're just gonna walk away from this kind of thing. I've always wanted to, like, double back on it. But yeah. uh, What we do in the shadows, especially if you like horror I, comedy, is yeah. so good. The movie, the TV show – it's yeah so, i need to so see it's so bad yeah, both of those are very high on my oh two watch list for sure i haven't seen either of them but yeah. i know i would love them yeah that was uh nathan and chad asking about that so uh yeah it's uh i really need to watch them uh it, it's just i have two kids it's hard to find time <laughs> so oh, yeah, if definitely. something's even vaguely like i have like a four and a half year old if something's even vaguely inappropriate I just I have to wait until after a certain time. So it's just like, right. okay, yeah. I guess I'm just not going to see this thing for a few years. I, I have I have no excuse. I just haven't watched it yet. So. <laughs> yeah, you're you're young and youthful, yeah. and you know, yeah, you, and you, you know, playing rock band and guitar hero in places, and, hey, and wearing jackets. We're, is, we're not we're not we're not talking shit on rock band on the stream. I wasn't. I, I was a motherfucker. All right, I, I got my guitar is literally rock band in my... shot right now. Ooh. We need to play camp. Cam, I, I I bought the two hundred and fifty dollar Ion drum set for for Rock Band for Xbox three sixty. Oh, like no, I ooh. Cho- choices were made. Um, did did, did not box get full of Rock Band guitar hero paraphernalia. Rock Band is uh. the spookiest video game. <laughs> so. I mean, if you wear costumes, it is. I mean, it you can play be. Ghostbusters. So. Mm-hmm. It's true. That's cool. Okay, by that logic, Just Dance <laughs> is also very spooky because you could dance yeah, to Ghostbusters. A, I mean, yeah, yeah, my yeah. dancing is warp. downright terrifying. So <laughs> and time warp, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we, we talk about movies and we talked about like uh, the, the genre and stuff like that. Let's talk about Halloween itself, though. So um, what would you say <laughs> is your favorite costumes you've done? Oh, well, one, are oh, for everyone, first question for everyone, are you a costume person for Halloween? I mean, yeah, we're all wearing different stuff right now, but uh, – are you in general do you dress up for halloween and then also what's your favorite costume and assuming it's something different than right now are you dressing up for halloween this year (laughs) uh so let's throw it to bells uh yeah i am a huge huge costume person all the time uh my husband can't stand it he doesn't want to do it but uh i am always dressed up in college i was a theater major and we, you know, you get a bunch of people who dress up in costume for their, like, day-to-day. Mm-hmm. We had every excuse ever to dress up. I think one of my favorites wasn't actually for Halloween, but was for a TV show-themed party. And I came downstairs halfway through the party dressed up as Denise, which is a Kristen Wiig character from SNL, <laughs> where she has the huh, tiny right. baby hands. I yes. don't know if you guys have yes. seen it. Yeah. yeah. I like tied my hair back, tried to make my forehead look as large as possible, <laughs> and then walked around with baby hands and like took shots with them and <laughs> put them in people's mouths. Awesome. And I think I looked really nice earlier too, so it was a very like dramatic shift. <laughs> <laughs> I really like going ridiculous. Like it's always fun to look nice, but the more ridiculous I can get, the more I'm like, all right, this is this is good. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I always try to put do put together a costume, but I always like the uh, I have two ideas. Let's smash them into each other. Or my favorite, clearly, yeah. Which yes, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, this was literally this has been sitting on my floor since doing a kind of funny related podcast, you know, with a bunch of people in August, and I'm just like. I got an idea. Like it, 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 it literally. I it was. This has been sitting on the floor, and I tripped over the mask. That and I'm like, 
Cthulhu sounds like Luigi <gasps> in the awesome. middle. I can put these together. <laughs> it was the dumbest oh, moment, and I had good. this moment like literally on the couch during dinner with my wife. Like I said this out. I paused the show, said this out loud, and she l- looked at me with like the most "I want to divorce you" eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was great. Um, no, but like uh, my costume, my. F- Two favorite costumes. The adult one is like the the worst thing. I was just in a bad mood for years, and I just didn't want to dress up. So like it's ridiculous. That sounds like so. What I would do is I just in my late twenties wore clothes that I wore in my uh in my late teens, and that was um and this is in Arizona to be clear. So I I, I would wear black jeans or black jean shorts. I'd wear a black long sleeve shirt that was from a failed crow cosplay. I did, and I would wear a black <laughs> corduroy jacket. Uh, black sunglasses and uh, later on I added a black hoodie and I went as my dead inner child <laughs> it was, right. ooh, okay. I did that's not good. expect that's that answer <laughs> that, it, because it looked like I was just dressed up normally and everyone's like Josh what are you doing and I'm like my dead inner child and it yeah I was I was a dick and I, I feel bad about the parties <laughs> I probably ruined with that but it still was it's still one that I I appreciated and if I'd if I played the role more I would have liked it but mm-hmm. my favorite costume is still the one from when I was a little kid when my mom made me a Ninja Turtle costume. It'll always be my favorite. <gasps> she good. didn't have a lot of money, and she took a garbage can lid, wrapped it in uh, brown garbage bags, which she had to drive around for hours to find. Uh, and, like, yeah, it's, it's like I found, I found pictures not that long ago of it, and it's awful. <laughs> it is awful, <laughs> but it's, like, wonderfully awful. Also, I was a tiny kid wearing a garbage can lid. It was it was comical sure, as hell. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's move along. Who, um, who else we got? So jo- well, I, uh, so I'm I'm gonna mention two. One because I'm not like I bought this and I just like wearing this, so it's just been like my <laughs> Halloween festive attire. So I don't really technically have a costume this year. I know that's <laughs> breaking the rules of this podcast, but nah, uh, <laughs> it's just Tuesday for Cam, <laughs> right? <laughs> Tuesdays with Cam. Um, Tuesdays with I mean, the Camdy man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I uh, so. Like, a couple of years ago, it was, like, right after I just moved to Kansas City, um, me and a bunch of friends went out to this Game of Thrones uh, Halloween bar crawl in downtown or midtown Kansas City. I know <laughs> I say midtown because somebody who lives in Kansas City might get mad at me for saying downtown. Um, <laughs> right. So, we, I have, I have never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. I just don't really care about it that much. Yeah. Um, but, like... All of us as a friend group decided it's really important to this person in our group. We're going to go. We're going to support the shit out of her. It's going to be great. We're going to be awesome friends. Everybody put so much damn effort into their costumes. They all looked really great. I still don't know who they were, but I was like, there's a dragon in Game of Thrones, right? And someone and she was like, I mean, sure, I guess. So what I did was I put the least amount of effort into it. I literally was wearing a fucking hoodie and a blue beanie and I got a green party hat, put it on top of my head like the pointy one. Uh, I had three. uh, I think they were red party hats taped them to my back so they looked like the spines and i had like an orange like party blower and i was the dragon uh and (laughs) the the bad thing about it was that the entire bar crawl every single person knew immediately that i was the dragon oh (laughs) and every single person that put so much effort into their costumes had to constantly explain who they were i was a finalist for the costume contest and if they would have told me i won i was just going to tell them no I felt kind of bad, but also really proud that I spent three dollars on a really effective costume. I mean, that's the it best. Was, that's that's awful and funny. One else. of my favorite things I've ever done, and it's like the that most brilliant and, thing for me. Please tell me you have pictures of that, that because I, uh, there are a couple. There's none with the spine that I've been able to find, mm, but I will probably no. throw them up on my Twitter, uh, probably on Halloween. Um, but as far as like my favorite costume, it's also one that whenever I was a kid, uh, my hair used to be a whole lot shorter. And uh, I decided that I wanted to be a mad scientist because I was like sort of oh. coming into terms with the fact that I was into some real dorky shit. <laughs> uh, and so my mom was like, all right, cool, we're going to make this happen. Uh, she bought me this lab coat woefully oversized. Like I was like maybe six years old. This thing was like an adult large like fucking doctor's (laughs) jacket 
uh, had that, had like uh, khakis on, had like with a belt, had some like plaid shitty button up shirt or whatever. And then like broken glasses. We like gelled up my hair and had a bunch of like a pocket protector with pens <laughs> and a bunch of stuff. Uh, I objectively looked cute as fuck as like a six year old <laughs> child. So that was that was pretty cool. I kind of like peaked in appearance there. Uh, so that was that's 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 it for me, I guess. Uh, that's, I mean, I like you got, you know, you got the uh, uh, stealing the spotlight older, you know, adult <laughs> costume, and then you've also got the cute kid costume. You that's know, right. That's right. I like it. Uh, Justin, how about yourself? Uh, as an adult, this is the most I've ever done. Uh, it's sad. <laughs> yeah, we did. It, this, this is the first Halloween podcast we've done in about four four years i want to say and i I, do love my last one well that's the thing is and four years ago um it was literally a case of the morning of the show i said to everyone shit did i forget we're doing a halloween show (laughs) and i'd forgotten to tell anyone that and i was like and then we turn on the cameras and there's justin with his green screen over his face and his glasses on top of the green screen (laughs) and he was was the invisible man and that was fucking awesome respect I didn't do the chroma key well, so no. it's just a fuzzy blob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we 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 try. We didn't really know a lot of things. Then we were both maybe it's five, five years actually. We were both very new to chroma keys and stuff like that, and it was. Well, the problem is I couldn't see to correct it. No, you, you, yeah. And I didn't know how to, <laughs> we weren't streaming then, I don't believe so. And I didn't know for video podcast editing how to actually. Uh, do that like how to actually like chroma key someone else's thing i didn't learn that skill for like two more years so it was uh it, but, uh, it, it was brilliant it, it, it brilliant in design maybe not in execution <laughs> yeah this is not that counts for deciding the moment of the show oh absolutely uh, as a kid though uh i hate you because mine was also ninja turtles <laughs> justin we're the same fucking but person we are. <laughs> so, so my mom like I uh believe that she like made the shell part out of like felt that could like hung over her shoulders, and then like we had like the old the like Ninja Turtle kit that had like the mask with the nose, the mm-hmm. crappy weapon. I think the elbow pads and the, yeah, that was Donatello. It's great, I, awesome. I had we did do Ghostbusters one year. Ghostbusters yeah. good. Uh, first thing I I did when I was a kid, uh, it wasn't for Halloween, but it was for like a parade, uh, which was like book theme. You're pursuing your favorite character, and we were able to walk in a parade. This get like elementary school, Justin. Uh, I was the magic school bus. Oh shit! <laughs> I like, need this I, story. Uh, no, it's just like I I loved that series. When I was a kid. I had a couple cardboard boxes to help my mom and my well, my very artistic mom and sister. And uh, yeah, we put like a, a large box, put some spitters on it, put a smaller box that's like the hood to it. And then we went in, colored it, uh, drew it out, had Miss Frizzle and the kids. Cause I don't remember your names, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I walked as uh, in that parade as the magic school buzz. It was that cool because like it, had the, it was like one of those things like on the left side it was the left view in the front, like it was proportionate on the right, <laughs> same deal. So it was like it's good stuff. I have never heard this before, and I very much appreciate the shit out of this right now. <laughs> I have to hunt it down. My mom has a picture of it somewhere. But. Yeah, if your mom has a picture, please uh, send it to me, because I, I really need to see this. Oh, that that is awesome. I I need to I, I need to track down all my Halloween costume pictures from my childhood, because there's some just really just dorky shit in there that is just... Yeah. It's just I got, br- like, real lazy with some of mine, like, whenever I was a kid, because I'm like... I want to be a fucking skeleton. So then we just <laughs> bought me like a skeleton suit. And I was like, that was easy shit. Mm-hmm. And then like my brother would always be like, I want to be a cool ninja or I want to be like other things. It's like, okay, that requires a little bit of prep. And I was like, I just want to be a skeleton. Just, <laughs> I just, I, I like skeletons. I still think skeletons are maybe the funniest shit on the planet. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you guys. One I of don't... my favorite memories oh, was a, uh... I my little brother's nine years younger than me, and I remember one of his very first Halloween costumes was this absurd like Elmo outfit that had like giant bulbous like Elmo eyes on the very top of it. And there's actually a Polaroid of me with him on my lap, but I'm dressed as a Dementor from Harry Potter <laughs> way before the movies came out too. So I'm like just in like a big black cloak with like corpse paint almost on my face <laughs> and like I'm trying to look all cool and then I've just got like a cute Elmo on my lap <laughs> and that like perfectly describes my sibling and I's relationship and that's I awesome. look back on it and go yep yeah, that's that's great <laughs> that's really good it checks out I, I, I love I love that kind of like dichotomy of costumes and stuff like that when it's just like 
A and B that just make no absolute <laughs> sense. Uh, for my kids' costumes this year, I very much wanted them to be completely and utterly different, unrelated costumes because I'm just like, this will make me laugh. And my wife is like, no, we're going to match them up. So, uh, When are you going to dress Sora up like Mickey Mouse? Uh, I mean, he, ha- he has Mickey ears, so... <laughs> Uh, eventually, a, a Vicky costume could be it could be a possibility. I want to just dress him like Sora. I mean, like that. Yeah, that seems like the <laughs> easiest yeah, yeah, possible yeah. option. I, I, I made that, that choice. Uh, so you know, we 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 we'll eventually dress him as something like that. This year, he's a Ghostbuster, purely yeah. being excellent. Uh, excellent. We, yeah, purely because our oldest, Roran, uh, he said he wanted to be something for Halloween back in like June and we forgot. And I asked him like a month ago, <laughs> hey, what do you want to be for Halloween? And he just goes, a, a, a not spooky ghost. Just like directly to me, I'm like, Sir, what? What? <laughs> and, and and yeah, and he just kept repeating. He's like, I want to be a not spooky ghost, not spooky, funny, not spooky, funny. He keeps saying to me, and I'm like, okay, let's see what so spirit like Halloween a, store has. So like a Pac-Man ghost, or oh, we, like that would have been cute. That would have been adorable, actually. We found him like a. It's a it's, honestly, it's a twenty five dollars sheet for all intents and purposes from uh, from Spirit, <laughs> and the ghost is smiling. Oh. Instead of you know frowning angry, uh, oh. which is wh- why we decided the ghost co- Ghostbusters yeah. costume. Uh, my That's favorite thing about guy. that is my wife very someone a stranger thirteen 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 cent check Casper the friendly ghost. See that would have been smart <laughs> yeah. to think of. Yeah, that would have been good. Uh, that would have been a smart uh, direction to go with. But yeah, no uh, it goes my, to Richie Rich. My <laughs> yes, <laughs> my my wife asked if we were going to dress up in Ghostbuster costumes as well, and I'm like, see, well, here's the thing, Ghostbuster costumes. If you put a baby in it, you can just put the jump sh- the jumpsuit that they sell at Spirit or whatever else on them, and you don't need anything else. If I'm addressed as a Ghostbuster, I'm needing a motherfucking proton pack, That's and right. and That's neither right. one of us are employed currently, so let's not <laughs> <laughs> let's not go that route. <sighs> so yeah, oh, I love definitely the most commitment I put in any costume because it's fair getting very moist in this mask. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look comfortable at all yeah yours looks really bad justin but your I, face I, has not moved in like the past <laughs> hour <laughs> i very much absolutely i appreciate the effort i appreciate you doing it uh well what we're gonna be wrapping up in a, in uh, just a few minutes in that regard is there any other halloween or spooky related stories or comments or anything anyone wants to discuss before we uh, hit our outro point anyone got anything candy's, can, candy's pretty good i like candy i didn't start liking candy, candy until i was like part. 30 I, what? I, what? I That's hate saying. I I hated I was that kid who when I went to the old lady's house and they would give you like fifty cents or a dollar or even a penny, I'd be like, ooh, money. You know, kind of thing. And I I, hey, I, I would be hey, very, Josh, like w- I, I love you. I would not have been friends with you <laughs> like whenever I was younger. No, that's, I mean, that's, yeah, that, there's definitely a lot. I, 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 well, I, you might have been because you like. friends now, but fuck, man. Because <laughs> you'd be like, here, have my candy. I don't want it. No, Is yeah. Perfect. No, that was, I was a good friend, person to be friends with because I didn't want to eat it. I would eat, on Halloween, I'd eat one bag of peanut M&Ms every year and Ooh. then I would just do nothing with the rest. God, I can't, I can't. I, mm. mm-hmm. What, Justin? That's crazy. No, I was about to say one thing that we brought up, like the whole, uh, I guess, start of the player witch, or might have been before that, but uh, Bleeding Green brought up, uh, how do you feel about found footage horror? Oh, um, I like it when it's fresh. Yeah, I like the concept of it. But in general, mm. actually, even when it was a fresh idea, I wasn't uh, a big fan of it just because I don't like things that imply this could be real. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way I could put it, but yeah, uh, I was like weirdly into the first three Paranormal Activity movies. Uh, like I thought, like the horror stuff and like the the scary shit was fine, but I'm like, oh, there's like some like really cool, neat like camera tricks going yeah. on here. How it's all just like one long continuous shot that just scares the shit out of you. The I also use thought of the like Xbox yeah. Connect was insane. Yes, that absolutely. was something that was just like no one's ever done that before. Right, right. Oh man, that was so cool. Uh, I I liked the I I liked the plot before it went too fucking off the rails because it sure got there. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I I my favorite part of like those first three movies was always. The part like right before the very end where it's just like, oh, this person's possessed and then they just die. Like that's <laughs> like that was that was fine. That seemed like very much of a cop out. But like the the part of like not knowing what's going on and the fact that it's presented as this kind of real footage was really fascinating to me. Mm. It did like freak me out a little bit, but it was 
tolerable enough for like you know like little old baby me who can't handle horror movies uh yeah but yeah i i really i i actually really enjoyed those movies like kind of looking back i should watch those again like since i haven't seen them <laughs> since they came out hmm yeah i i feel the same way about wanting to go back and rewatch the first couple of saw movies because i've li- loved them mm-hmm. when they first came out and i've mm-hmm. just never like gone back and i'm just curious what my opinions would be now uh nate said in chat uh, yo i unabashedly love found footage phoenix forgotten is a really good one about the phoenix lights and nate, you would love found footage <laughs> yeah, that, seems like that, a, one. that seems like a very nate thing found footage yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not familiar Absolutely. either yeah, I've only known Nate now for a few months, and I I, I feel like that's uh, <laughs> to to, to a T. Like yeah. Also, same. So <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Nate saying in chat, I have a film degree, but love dumbfound footage. <laughs> hey, I, there's nothing wrong with that, man. Like, yeah. you know, I. They're I some of the have, easiest like, things to film. Totally, mm-hmm. totally. Like, I I just love kind of like I one of my favorite monster movies and i fucking love monster movies is uh cloverfield actually like i love the fact that that is presented from like okay well we just found this uh video camera that has like this first person footage of this dude who was at a party i fucking love that uh nobody else did have you Uh, watched it recently (laughs) oh i love cloverfield okay great cool Uh, i have not watched cloverfield in the past couple of years but i need to go back and watch it again we rewatched it not too long ago and it's funny how when you watch it you never like remember about how dated it is but there's that like opening scene where they're at a party and everybody's like on their flip phone and like fallout boy is playing and it's like whoa what's happening here (laughs) i remember whenever (laughs) i remember whenever the i think it was the first transformers movie hit theaters like there was a trailer for what became known as cloverfield it was just like 11808 or whatever i was deep into that shit like i was like following the ARG that they had set up for it. I would like, I saw it and I'm like, oh, this is cool. What's happening? And it was like, just this like experience that uh, Nate and I also are basically the same person as you can tell in chat. Uh, (laughs) It's weird. Uh, But yeah, no, uh, I fucking love Cloverfield. And I feel like that movie does not get enough respect. Like I am very much the type of person who will not watch like big horror movies in in October but if I don't really watch a whole lot of movies anyway but I'll watch the shit out of some monster movies year round so oh, yeah. I think what's really monster unique squad, about found great flick what is it monster squad oh. <laughs> okay uh, uh, I think it's not horror but a lot <laughs> <laughs> One of the cool things about found footage is so often you don't get to actually see, like, what's going on Mm -hmm. because you are flipping around so much. And I think that adds to the, like, suspense of, like, what is it that they're seeing? Like, what is fucking shit up? Like, Cloverfield, like, you don't get to see that actual monster for almost the entire movie. It's like the last shot of the movie, yeah. Yeah, and, like, paranormal activity, other than when they use the connect. I mean, you just saw the weird fuck shit that was going on around, but Mm -hmm. you're like, but what is it? Like... And I think that adds to that suspense. They're unique in that way. Yeah, I liked uh, it scared the shit out of me and I have not watched it since. But (laughs) one of the things I really liked about Blair Witch is that you just kind of have no idea what's going on even after you finish watching that movie. Mm. Like it just kind of it is like entirely from the perspective of those people. And then it ends. Like, I love that. Mm -hmm. Uh, No, uh, I was just thinking about found footage. Uh, I really want. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a journey. I really want VR to, in general, to to uh, get better with technology because I want to see a found footage, uh, horror VR game where like you are, you know, you're in, you're immersed, like, but like like a, a Vive style thing where you're actually like walking around stuff, but like you can actually go look at security cameras in the house you're in, so you're like seeing the perspective yourself like walking around the room and stuff like that, seeing stuff you, so my, my idea in my head is, you know, you're walking around and things are all, you know, hidden just out of sight and stuff like that, that kind of thing, something, you know, PTS, but then you, you're going to look at security cameras and you see essentially what you were doing earlier and you're seeing, Oh shit, there was something behind me kind of oh, stuff. Fuck me up. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if I'd ever play that, but like the concept <laughs> is something I really want to see. <laughs> Actually, I probably VR- would play that. VR horror is a crazy all other mm-hmm. kind of beast. Yep. I I couldn't I couldn't do it. I I <laughs> no. That would just that would put me down for good, I think. <laughs> I tried to get through Five Nights at Freddy's and it is it is just wild. 
Mm-hmm. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I can play the, like, Five Nights at Freddy's, like, normal original games. And, like, you know, they're jump scares. They get old, like we've said. Sure. But being, like, fully immersed, especially, I'm not I'm not a tall human. I'm five foot one. And when you're in <laughs> VR, it, like, measures that out. Mm-hmm. And these animatronics literally tower over me. Mm-hmm. And can like sneak into my room. Oh God! It that shit. <laughs> yeah, that is I, some I shit that will really fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen too much about like the quality of it, but I know there's like a kind of sort of until dawn prequel that takes place in like the insane asylum and you are a patient at it and it's VR. And mm-hmm. I saw that and I'm like, I'm never fucking playing this game. <laughs> I'm never gonna do it. Yeah. yeah. I forget what that one's called, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking uh, about. The Inpatient, is that it? I think that's yes. what it's called. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so, jeez, uh, my skin actually crawled a little bit at the thought of <laughs> Yeah, fuck that, right? <laughs> this whole oh, no, mm-hmm. that's, that's too much. Uh, okay, well, I think we're kind of, uh, we're, we've kind of reached a little bit of the end of the show here. So uh, we're going to go around, uh, start with Cam. Plug whatever you want. Tell people about your show. Tell people about yeah. your wonderful podcast. Like you can mention guests, whatever you want. Uh, cool. The floor uh, is yours. Yeah. Uh, so you said this episode's going up Thursday on Halloween, probably? Uh, it'll either, I think it might end up going up on Friday just because we released Catch All on Thursday. But okay. it'll, it'll come fine. out. it should come out this week. Cool, cool, cool. So, uh, hey, hey, what's up? My name's Cam. I've been talking at you for an hour. Um, <laughs> I am, you can find me on Twitter, first of all, at the Man, T-H-E-K-A-M-D-Y-M-A-N. Uh, you, I do a little bit of Twitch streaming at twitch.tv slash Cam Koenig as well. Not very often, but I'm trying. It's usually rock band because I'm a big fucking nerd. Um, <laughs> I am, as I mentioned earlier, a co-host of the New Entertainment System podcast with uh, my boy Two-Headed Giant there in the chat right now. Uh, it's a really silly, just procedurally generated video game pitch show is kind of a good way to put it. Um, we've got some neat projects coming up. We just had uh, Max Scoville from IGN yes. and the Comedy Button on the show, which was fucking wild i'm so uh, blown away by that yeah we we've got some like really cool guests coming up like everybody that we have on has been great and wonderful it's it's an absolute blast to record and i hope you guys enjoy it as much as we do uh i think that's it if uh, really anything that i work on or guest on or anything you can find on my twitter uh just at the candy man i'm pretty active there so if you like shitty memes and <laughs> me talking about stuff that i'm involved in that's the place to see it also if you want to really just followed like one of the most positive human beings i've ever met in my entire mm-hmm. life Thanks. loving human beings like that, that th- th- there's all there's other perks to following i just want well. people to feel appreciated damn it <laughs> Dag damn I it. <laughs> also i will be on the new entertainment system podcast what like next month i think it's, it's gonna be november uh, i'd have to pull up the calendar whatever i recorded with you but we yeah, record is, we, we record a couple weeks it ago, is scheduled so, for yeah, sure it's, it's scheduled for like november or december or something like that something like uh, that if you yeah. want to listen to the the uh i believe the goopiest episode ever uh, <laughs> uh nate is <laughs> telling right. me november 18th that is <laughs> a hor- you, that is a horrifying date for me that i can't talk about why on the podcast well now it's a good date <laughs> yeah for this yeah. show <laughs> no for this show so like i'll actually have some, well, while i'm sitting in terror i'll have something to uh listen to <laughs> great <laughs> uh but yeah so bells how about yourself where can people find you what you do yada 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 yeah uh like i said before i am on a group channel uh twitch.tv slash gp underscore tv um where we rotate girls and video games all the time always like duos trios of us uh which is super cool and unique you can also find us on all social medias and on youtube under girls play which is what gp stands for shocking i know (laughs) 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 Uh, and you can find me on twitter hell's bells underscore gptv see what i've got going on i'm just a big nerd a little bit of a dork you know Approved. I mean, I did, that's what we like around here. So, you know, thumbs up to that. <laughs> Speaking of dorky things, I totally forgot to do the wholesome moment of the week uh, before we did the outros. So we're going to slip into that really quickly. Uh, it's my favorite segment we do every week where I just want to make sure if, if we're if the show gets ever negative or anything like that, we have some positive thing to end the show <laughs> on. Uh, I honestly struggled this week. So I'm going to go with something a, just a little close to my heart. My wife went to uh, Galaxy's Edge. I still haven't been. But she went to Star Wars Land and I asked her for a present and she bought me a yellow kyber crystal so when oh, i eventually awesome. have money i can make i can make a lightsaber that's and, awesome so cool and this thing is not apparently coming out so you're ruining my moment <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, so it's just it's 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 a it's a it's a little crystal. That's really cool. It's it's <laughs> it, it's. It, I don't really know enough about it. All I know that uh, I, Justin and I are going to Disneyland. I think in February potentially, and it's going to cost me a few hundred dollars to, yeah. to, to finish idea. this present. So yeah. it's just worth it's just a, worth a it. nice a, a nice thing. She's also apparently going back to Galaxy's Edge this year without me. So <laughs> it's a little <laughs> a little less wholesome. No, uh, that that's that's my little like wholesome thing for the week. We really gotta. Start pushing people to uh, give us some moments on Twitter because there's some good stuff in the world. And I want to make people know about good, positive things, even if it's a spooky show, especially if it's a spooky <laughs> show. All right. So uh, thank you all for joining us this week. <laughs> Starting next week, the Conflict Calibering podcast is moving to a new... You know, I actually want to make sure people hear this. Starting next week, the Conflict <laughs> Calibering podcast is moving to a new time to deal with the stupid state of Arizona, which I live in, because we do not change daylight savings like everyone else. So, are you the stupid state or the rest of us the stupid states? I Ooh, mean... That's a good question. Yes. The fact of the matter is daylight savings is kind of an antiquated thing that probably we shouldn't be doing. But we don't have to work children in the field anymore. Yeah, I would, I would go as far to say it sucks. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll say it. I ain't afraid. I don't love it. We can lose it. Yeah, yeah I great. mean, in general, we should lose it. But here's the thing. If almost, I think if it's roughly like 40 and a half states are doing it, then they, they really should all be doing it. And it's just like ridiculous. So uh, for, yeah, I understand that. Unless That's people, not what heroes do. Yep, Jesus, just uh, uh, I just caught sight of you while you said that. <laughs> uh, um, so, in, assuming people don't really hate it, the Constant Calibering podcast will now be live every Tuesday at four thirty p.m. Pacific, seven thirty p.m. Eastern, right here on Mixer.com slash Concalpod, uh, which is actually, if you're stuck in Arizona, the time's not changing. Also, sorry, you're stuck in Arizona with me. Uh, and then for people, uh, for the catch-all, catch-all will be the normal time of 5 p.m. Pacific tomorrow, if you're watching this live. But starting next week, it'll be at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Joy of joys. So we'll see how that works out if people end up really hating it. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll move stuff around and figure the best out. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll we'll see how that all goes. Uh, we are on Facebook at facebook.com slash calibrating, Twitter at concalpod. I'm at Bear Punch. Justin is at Justin underscore glorious. Check Instagram at instagram.com slash calibrating. Come chat with us on Discord at concentcalibrating.com slash Discord. Please make sure to leave us a review wherever you are able to. It really does help get the podcast in front of more listeners. And make sure to subscri- make sure to subscribe on as many platforms as you can. Because again, more people that listen to this, more people watch this, uh, the more people who you know will learn about us. So it, it, it just keeps building and never stops. Or something to that effect. And with that, we bid you a good sign off. <laughs>